<laughs> wow, you folks. Welcome to Mower Mike's channel, whatever this thing is. And I hope you're ready for the craziest mechanical video I have done to date because what we are doing, we are actually going to go inside this Kawasaki motor and replace the piston rings. Yes, we're going inside the bowels of this FR691V twin cylinder, 26 horse Kawasaki on this Gravely 52 inch HD mower, beautiful red mower. Now, what makes this so crazy? Well, first of all, because I have never done this before, I'm what you call a hobbyist mechanic. So I can guarantee you one thing in this video, I will make mistakes. I just don't know what they are yet. But I really think it's gonna work out for several, several reasons. First of all, I got this secondhand eBay Kawasaki manual, so we're good there. I've got a lot of tools, but most importantly, I've just got heaps and heaps of unfound confidence that I'll be able to do this. <laughs> so this motor specifically, what it's doing, it is just puffing a whole lot of smoke. And I'm like everybody else. I've been throwing parts of this motor. I've replaced the carburetor. I've replaced the head gaskets. I've cleaned all the carbon off the heads. I've done everything except going inside the motor and everything I've done, it creates smoke just like before. So I'm about 75% of what confidence of what's going on is that the oil is seeping past the piston rings, which means you need new piston rings because they get worn out because my buddy, Dr. Bob ran this thing low on oil like 50 times. All right. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you exactly what it's doing. And then we're going to rip this baby off, throw it up on my table, and we're going to start dissecting it and see if we can make this work. So strap in, it's gonna get weird, but we're gonna have a good time. So let's go ahead and uh, start her up and see what's going on. All right, so I've got this mower ripping at full speed. And you see, I've getting a lot of white smoke puffing out of it, kind of off and on, off and on. Now, always when you see white smoke, that means oil's burning. When you see black smoke, that means extra fuel is burning. So this has an oil consumption issue. It's burning about a quart of oil every hour or so. Now, two things could be happening typically. Either your head gasket is bad or you've got bad piston rings. Now, I've already replaced the head gaskets and I've got a video I'll link below on how to test out the head gaskets. But this one, I'm going all in. I'm saying it is the piston rings that is causing this. So white smoke is oil. <laughs> hey, all right Whew. what we got here we got one fr 691v kawasaki two cylinder 26 horse motor pulled off the lawn mower and as you can see also i've taken the exhaust off i've taken the plastic pieces off which professionally what we call we call that removing the dress so she is stripped down and what i'm going to do next i'm going to remove the heads so move the valve covers remove the heads and then we're going to get inside the motor and actually pull the pistons out. Now, I am not going to film refill, removing the heads and the plastic pieces and all that. I've just done that in my head gasket removal video on the same engine. So I'm going to list that below and not waste your time going through all that again. I've got great videos on replacing the head gaskets, cleaning the heads, cleaning the pistons, whole nine yards. So next, what you're going to see is we're going to be butt side up. We're going to have the bottom pulled off. Well, I'm going to show you how to pull the bottom off. That just sounds weird. And then we're going to get inside the motor. So stay with me. Hopefully I don't break anything, but let's find out what happens. All right, kids. As you can see, we actually got the heads pulled off the motor. Again, I've got a great video on how to do that. I'll put the link down below on my head gasket removal video. There's a couple tricks there. So before you start cranking it, I'd suggest watching that. Also, just as a pointer, I found out I removed the heads off while it was sitting on this table, which was quite the challenge because there's some torque on them head bolts. So I would actually suggest removing the heads before you remove it from, before you remove the engine actually from the lawnmower. That way it gives you a sturdy point to do it. And then you can pull the, lawn, the engine off, just, a, just an idea. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna pull off the bottom oil pan here and the way it is set up, you got 10 bolts going around. I've removed the 10 bolts and now we're gonna start cranking on it. Um, it looks pretty well on there. So I think we're gonna have to use a pry bar. I got a big orange hammer. <laughs> so we're gonna get her off one way or the other. All right, for my next trick, we're gonna pull this oil pan off. As you can see, it's probably gonna get pretty messy. So I got my little camouflage uh, beat up shorts on the bottom and we're just gonna start prying it off. See, there's lots of good little pry points here. I'd suggest not going straight to using a hammer yet, but uh, knowing me, I'll find use of the hammer. Eventually. 
All right, so we got some prying. So what you want to do, you want to find little crevices? Come on. All right, now she's being stubborn. Make sure you got all 10 bolts off of her. <clears throat> Interesting. All right, I'm going to give it a couple whacks because that's what I like to do. Kind of loosen things up. Again, don't use a regular hammer. I'd suggest a, a dead blow hammer like that sucker. And then just start. All right, looks like that may have loosened her up just a touch. There we go. I see some light, baby. And once you see a little light, what you can do, you can just wedge your screwdriver in there and just start twisting it. Just, you know, take it easy. And you want to go around the sides. You know, you get a little bit on one side and go from the... Whoa! <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Well, it definitely popped off, as you can see. So now we're going to carefully remove said cover. Uh, there are a lot of parts that just went flying on the inside of here. All right. Oh, slow Nelly. All right. Well, I can see here we got one cover. And what we're looking at is this here is the camshaft, which spins and it runs the lifters. Those things popped out. So the lifters bump up. They push up and down on the push rods, that little cup. And it opens and closes the valves, makes it go boom, boom. So, all right. So we've got the oil pan off. That is not how I expected it to go. Uh, but go ahead and make sure you're going to see these little lifters. Make sure to go ahead and grab those. If you can, try to see which way they went, but obviously they went flying everywhere, uh, so we're not going to be able to see which way they went. Okay. All right, gang, I'm just going to geek out over the inside of this motor. This is just such a good, good example of a clean, very simple engine. You can see how it works. So we've got the crankshaft right here. You can see it's all balanced. And then as it turns, boom, boom, you've got your rods, the rods right there, which are hooked on to the, the piston. So when it goes boom on the piston, shoves down that rod, causes this whole crankshaft to turn. And so what we're gonna do next, we're gonna take off these rod uh, caps right here. So we're gonna undo those two bolts. And that way I can slide this piston all the way out and then we can swap out the piston rings. This is the only way to do it because as you can see, you can't pull that piston down. It's gotta come out the top and that's why we have to take off the heads. So this is really cool. You can see how it all, all this happens. You know, you got your camshaft uh, gear right here, runs the camshaft that lets the air and the fuel in and then all the action, it all ends up right down here where all the force happens. And right here is where your PTO runs uh, everything on your lawnmower. So just really cool. All right, so let me reposition and we're gonna figure out how to get those rod bearing caps off and slide these suckers out of their home. All right, gang, now before we actually start pulling the pistons out of this, a casing, I want to make one public service announcement. It is a very good idea to mark the parts. That way we know which way to install them when they go back in, because especially on these bearing caps and the main bearings, you want to put them on the same exact spot that you took them off. So what I've done, I see I took a, a pin and put a mark there so we know that goes there. And if you look at there, I put dots there. And then on the pistons also, I just put numbers on them. That way we know when we start reinstalling all this stuff, that it goes in the same spot because some of this stuff wears funny and you wanna make sure it goes in the same piston. All right, so next what we're gonna do, we're gonna unbolt these suckers and yank them out. All right, you boys ready for the money shot? Next, we're gonna actually remove the piston. So these are 10 millimeter bolts on these rod caps. Really easy, there's not much torque on them. And then you should be able to pop them out like so and then Rod cap comes off, and then you should, look at that, <laughs> one piston out. So, all right, so what we've got here, again, make sure to keep track of your rod caps, and now that we've got our little dots on there, I know which way to go, so nothing gets mixed up. The pistons are numbered. All right, now one thing to notice, you're gonna notice my pistons are awfully purty, and my heads are really, really clean. Now, yours are not going to look like this because there's probably a lot of carbon buildup and gunk. Now, I did a separate video when I pulled the heads off for the head gasket video 
where I did a deep clean on all these parts. I'll put the links down below. But when you pull these off, you do want to clean off all the carbon off of them. Uh, make sure everything's really, really clean because that is a 400 hour service interval on these motors. Yes, in the manual it says to pull the heads every 400 hours and clean the carbon. All right, so that's super cool. So we've got the pistons out. And what I'm gonna do next is I am going to hone the cylinders because I think that is very, very important. But I'm not gonna show you here. I'm gonna do a separate video on honing the cylinders to go through all the detail because there's more to it because uh, it is an optional thing. Uh, so, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the pistons. We're gonna throw some piston rings on, look at the ones I bought and get this sucker done. All right, so we finally get to talk about the actual piston rings. So when you look at your cylinder, you're gonna see uh, several piston rings on it. There's two compression ones up top. And what that's designed to do is when the combustion blows up in here, they hold and seal against the outside, the inside of the cylinder. That way when it pushes down, you're not losing any of that pressure or any of the gases around that actual piston into the crankcase. We wanna keep it all up top to do the maximized force down and, down and up. And then down below it, you're gonna see one with a little ridgy ring and that is an oil ring. It's meant to keep all the oil down south uh, where it belongs. Now these things, they do wear. So I'm hoping that these things are just worn off. And all you have to do to take them off, they get a little slippery. You should be able just to take them off like so. And this is one of your compression rings. Now they're meant to be an actual wear item and there is a way to test. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slide this compression ring into the engine cylinder and then we're gonna measure the gap. I'm gonna show you how you can tell whether these are worn out or not. <laughs> All right, next we're gonna measure the piston rings I pulled off and see if they're actually within spec. It's pretty cool, there is a way to figure out how worn out these piston rings are. What we're gonna do, we're gonna measure the gap because as this thing slides up and down and this metal wears off, this gap is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger because it's gonna be a smaller piston ring. So. What you do, you just push it back into the cylinder, like so. And then you really wanna push it down so it's equal around each side. I've got this goofy little tool off of Amazon and it pushes down each side of that piston ring equally so it'll slide all the way down in there, like so. Boom, boom, you can loosen these up, slides against the side of the piston ring. Um, as you can see, that tool is not an exact science, but it, it does work. And then what we're gonna do next, we're gonna take my new gigantic feeler gauge I got off the Amazon and we're gonna measure that gap because that gap should be no larger than 0.024 inches per the Japanese in Kawasaki land. All right, so I've got my giant feeler gauge. We're gonna go in here with the 0 0.02. We're gonna measure that gap. Wow, that gap looks gigantor. All right, you can see that, yeah, we're way, way more than 0 0.02. Let's go 0 0.03, 0 0.03. This is way out of spec if that fits. Oh yeah, it looks like you can fit five of them suckers in there. All right, the biggest feeler gauge I got, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, huh. What if we add the two biggest? Let's go 0 0.4 plus 0.2. See if that actually fits in there. Oh yeah, 0.04 plus 0.2 plus 0.3. Oh, okay. So if we do 0.04 plus 0.03, per my Texas Tech math, that would be 0.07. Yep, and that fits. That's So this is about 0.07, so it's almost three times the size of the gap as it should be within spec. So I think we have officially found our issue with this motor, this piston ring. All these piston rings are probably totally, totally shot. And these are designed to be this way. This thing's got 450 hours. Uh, Bob did not exactly change the oil as promised. Uh, so hopefully these piston rings wear out before the rest of the engine wears out, which I think is what happened here. So we're gonna go ahead back. I'm gonna show you the new piston rings we're gonna throw on there and slap this thing back together and get back to hopefully she'll be making some horsepower. All right, folks, now we actually get to install the piston rings on this purdy, purdy piston. Now, before you start installing them, make sure your piston is clean. Go through and clean them up. I've got a pretty cool video on cleaning pistons. Also, make sure your ring landings are nice and clean. What I like to do on those, take one of your 
old piston rings, not your new ones. Snap it in half, and then what you can do, you can go in there and just really get in there and clean it like so to make sure they're nice and nice and clean. Now also, I like to go ahead and put a little engine assembly lube down here in these ring landings. I like Real Purple Max Tough uh, just to kind of get a little lube up in there. That way them rings are nice and free. All right. Now the piston rings I've got right here, that's your part number. Do double check that you get the right piston rings for the right engine model. This is for the FR691V, I think that's the number. And these are not common. I went to my mower shop. They did not have them in stock. I ordered them on Amazon. Took a couple weeks to come in, but they are in. All right, so what we've got here, we've got five piston rings. Your two thick ones are going to be up top. We're going to talk about those in a minute. You're going to start with the lower ones, which is going to be your, your oil one. Now, look at this thing. When you install it, make sure it doesn't overlap like so. They've got to kind of butt heads right there and install the ridgy one first. Don't install the little skinny ones. Just trust me, they will not go in there. All right, easy breezy. Install that one, as you can see, and then go ahead and take your two little skinny ones and install those. Install the one on the bottom first. Try not to bend them. <laughs> what am I doing? All right, you can see it slides in there like so. Now these two little skinny ones, it doesn't matter which way they go. Uh, the little tiny dudes, but when we get to the compression rings, you're going to see those do matter. It's very important which way they go. All right, so you can see right there, we've got a skinny one. Oh, look at that. So that oil one, the ridgy one, goes in the middle, and you get your two skinny ones right there. Now, next we're going to do the compression rings. Now, it's very important we get these rings on the correct way. As you can see here, you're going to have two rings, and one is going to be marked with a 1R, other one with a 2R. Let's see if we can see that. So the 2R one is going to go as the second ring. The 1R is going to go up top. Also, make sure your 1R is facing up and your 2R is facing up. So the first one we're going to do, we're going to do 2R. So that's going to go on the second ring landing. I think these are called ring landings. If not, I'm sure some jackwad online is going to tell me I'm an idiot. God, some of you guys. I'm not a professional, as you can see. I'm sure there's a professional tool for installing piston rings, but I like to use my fingers. All right, so we got that one, the 2R, and it's got a little pink mark there, and the 2R is facing up. 1R, make sure 1R is facing up or facing up. Go ahead and install. All right, so you can see we got all new piston rings. There's gonna be five on there. Now, when you position the gaps, don't line your gaps up right on top of each other. That, that just can't be good for anything. Make sure they're, they're staged off a little bit so that way they're not on top of each other. So, all right, we got to move, move around, moving around. All right, so we should be good to install these into the motor. How cool is that? Just a fun little project. All right, so next we're going to show you how to slide them on in and set them home. All right, folks. I am getting awfully, awfully giddy because I get way too excited about engine work and we're actually going to slide these pistons where they belong back inside this cylinder. This, is, this video is getting a little long in the tooth, ain't it? All right, so we've got our new fancy Japanese made piston rings. We've got them all staggered the way they should be. And next we're gonna install them. Now to install them, you'll see you got these new fat piston rings. They're not just gonna slide in there like so. So we're gonna have to compress the piston rings and then slowly and softly tap it back home. Now, you got a couple options. You will need a tool here to compress said piston rings. I've got this old thing I've had for, you know, 20 years. This thing is just old and, and rusty, so we're not going to use that. So instead, I went on the Amazon, and I got this thing. It comes with all these different rings, and what the idea is that, here, here's the right ring. You take said ring, make sure they're clean first, and then you wrap it around the piston, and then what it's gonna do is gonna squeeze these. And so I'm gonna show you how this works. Now, before you go any further, I have to stress, make sure everything is very, very clean. Make sure your piston bore is clean. Make sure your cylinder is clean. Hit it with some carb cleaners. Get everything, the big, fat, blue, expensive rags. Make sure everything's tippity, tippity clean. And then after we clean everything, you wanna lube things. So first, lube your rod journal. Make sure that's clean. Get some lube, because this is where this sucker's gonna be making the, the connection, you know what I mean? 
All right, we've got some lube there. Then go ahead and lube the piston skirts also, around the side, around the piston rings, around the whole sucker. And what I do, I like this Royal Purple Max Tough lube. You can just use engine oil if that's all you got. But the, if you got the Max Tough, go with the Max Tough. All right, so our piston is ready to slide in there. But one thing you're gonna notice, when I used all that alcohol, it actually rubbed off my Sharpie markers. Apparently Sharpie does not stand up well against carb cleaner. But I did some research, so don't you worry, folks. And there is another method. When you look at the piston, you'll see an arrow right there. Now, as long as you saw that arrow out towards the flywheel, the flywheel is a big chunk of rusty metal uh, with the fan blades on it, that's the way it slides in. Don't slide it backwards. So make sure you slide it in towards the flywheel. All right, folks, we'll get everything lubed up. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little extra lube down here in the bore. Make sure she's gonna slide on home, you know what I mean? Now, all right. And now, before you start, go ahead and give it a look down there in the bore. That way you're gonna, you're gonna see where this thing is gonna land. It's gonna land right on that rod journal. So, let me give you a little look. So if you look down in there, see that? I've already got one installed and this thing is gonna slide right there. It's gonna land right there. So, just to give you a little heads up of where we're going with this said <laughs> piston. All right, hang on, hang on. You got your seat belts on. All right, we're gonna try to focus. Look at that. All right, so take your piston ring. Piston, piston. I know, I make so many mechanical mistakes in my verbiage. And then take your little raparuski. Yep, all right, wrap it over there. And don't wrap it all the way down. Just wrap it so it covers the piston rings because we want that skirt right there to be able to start it. So, and then take your fancy pliers. These are the weirdest looking pliers I've ever seen in my life. And all right, we got our arrow pointed out. I am nervous. Go ahead, slide her down. Give it a look down the bore. Make sure she's gonna slam home. Yep, looks like we got a good one. All right, and then you're gonna have to give it a slight pounding. Now, not a hard pounding with a hammer. Get something soft. I got the the head of this thing, <laughs> the front of it's really dirty. But look at that, just real soft. There you go, there you go. All right, and then go ahead and give it a lusky. Yep, looks like we made it home on that rod journal. All right, folks, and that's how she's done. So next we're gonna slide back underneath here and we're gonna strap on uh, these suckers. I forgot they're called, main rod bearings or something or another. And then we're gonna be completely connected, the horsepower maker to the crankshaft, which then connects to your lawnmower. So, all right, stay with me, and I swear we're gonna get this thing done within, I don't know, four or five more shots. I feel like we're finally making some progress. We'll get our pistons in the bore, hooked onto our rods, and then we got our rod end cap. So next we're gonna install the rod end caps. Now, here is your rod end cap. These are very, very important. Now, before you install them, make sure to clean them, and you do need some engine building lube on that end cap. So make sure it is well lubricated, like so. And then you're just gonna slide it up in there and then you're gonna bolt it up. And all they are, they're two 10 millimeter Japanese bolts. I swear I think about 90% of Japanese bolts are 10 millimeter. And you're gonna strap it up and we are going to tighten them to 87 inch pounds. And it is very, very important that you have a torque wrench. Now, I will be posting links to all the tools I use in this video down below. As you can see, oh, come on. It's a little tighter now, now we got fresh pistons in that baby. And then we're just gonna go ahead and torque it down. Come on, hand tighten them first. Look at my, I'm sure I got a big giant freaking white forearm right there. That's what everybody wants to see, right? <laughs> all right, and 87 inch pounds. Make sure to actually use a torque wrench. 87 inch pounds is not much force, as you can see. All right, I think this sucker's coming together pretty good. And honestly, I thought I would've broke something by now or really screwed something up, but you know, I think I'm, I'm batting a, a thousand right now, but stay tuned, I usually screw up something. If that's what you're tuning in for. I think that's what most people are tuning in for. All right, all right, come on. Come on, torque wrench. It's a little sucker, but she will eventually clamp. It does help 
Especially when you got royal purple lube all over your fingers. Things get a little slippery. <laughs> but there we go. Hear that? Oh, something about that click of that torque wrench just does it for me, folks. All right. So that sucker's torqued down. We're going to use my little fingers to get behind there and do the other one. And then we're going to install some camshafts. We're going to do a new oil ring. We're going to do all sorts of fun stuff. So stay tuned. All right. Now the real fun begins. We get to install the camshaft. Now, before you install the camshaft, you have to install the lifters. The way this works, the lifters are going to slide in here. And as this camshaft turns, it hits these cam lobes and it pushes up. And when that lifter pushes up, it pushes up the push rod, which is going to slide in that little cup right there. And when it pushes up the push rod, that's what pushes the valves open. So you can see this is all timed based on this gear, matches up with this gear. So, all right, first, the lifters. Now, hopefully, you weren't like me and you actually marked which lifter went in which hole. But if you didn't, it's probably not that big of a deal. Most important part is make sure to lube it. We want lube on both sides of the lifter. So I'm going to go ahead and lube that, that, and just all around it. And all you do, you're going to see four little holes right here. And they just slide in the holes like so. And just make sure they're all the way in there. And also, this is a good time to make sure your lifters are clean and then make sure everything is clean. I've gone ahead and done another cleaning because this is a perfect time to do a cleaning of the inside of the engine and of your gasket. So I went around here and cleaned this because once that camshaft gets in there, it gets a little harder to clean. And again, I'm using the any type of engine assembly lube. You really don't want to use just oil on this. You need something a little thicker, like an engine assembly lube. And this is getting a <laughs> a little loop tastic so I'm not gonna waste your time with my slippery fingers sliding these in so I'm gonna get these four in and then we're gonna play with the camshaft <laughs> all right now the top two lifters went in easy I'm just gonna go ahead and show you mainly because I want to show off my new pliers I got these uh German made pliers knipex super super cool and it kind of helps slide them on in there there you go nice nice now this is just this is just fun. I mean this is the same way a car engine works, just a miniature version. But what's interesting is the actual diameter on the cylinders is the same or pretty dang close to a 327 Chevy V8, the LS motors. Very, very similar. LS motors 2.98. These are about three inches. Now the big difference here, these have a much shorter stroke because they're meant to make more torque, not as much horsepower. So that's your unqualified lesson of the day for engine building. All right, so next we've got our, our lifters in there, and next we're going to do the camshaft. Again, make sure it's clean. And on the camshaft, you're going to lube everything because this camshaft is very important. Lube the end, lube all the cam journals, lube the whole sucker right there. More lube, the better, I say. Oh, yeah, nothing like that royal purple lube. Get all in there. Yep, 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 yep. Very official. All right, now, one thing you're going to notice, this camshaft, you can see a dot on it right there. That dot is going to line up with the dot on the journal. There's a dot right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little tiny dot on the crankshaft gear also. Let's see if we can zoom in right there. So what we're going to do, when we slide it in here, it's going to slide this little thing right here. You see that blue thing down there in the in the bottom. I'm not sure why it's blue. It's kind of cool. So when you slide it in, make sure it goes in there and then you're going to line up the dots. Oh my gosh, that slid in way, way too easy. <laughs> Let's try not to. All right. Now that obviously <laughs> off-weighted my, my setup here. So let me go ahead and I'm going to use a, a knee to hold my engine and then we're going to zoom in. So right now I'm standing on one foot on a ladder. Just so I can show you folks, look at dot to dot. Make sure those line up because that's what times this engine. There's no funny timing you have to adjust, but you have to make sure those are in line. That way the camshaft is going to open up the valves at the same, the correct time as the crankshaft. So, all right, well, that is it. Look at that. So we got a camshaft in there. We've actually got all the guts into the motor. So next I'm going to show you how to put the, the bottom cover on and our new seals the new oil seals stay with me so let's talk about how we're going to button this sucker up and get this crankcase cover back on the motor but before we do that i got a couple of quick editorial notes first of all you're going to look right here this here is your oil pump down underneath this cover 
I suggest if you're this deep in it, go ahead and take that cover off because below that cover, you're going to see this. This is a filter screen. Now, when I first took this sucker off, it was caked. Like, I don't know how any oil was getting through there. So I went ahead and blew that off with some carb cleaner and compressed air. And also go ahead and throw a little assembly lube in here and clean up this area here and just make sure it goes back in there. So it's a little, little jigsaw puzzle. All right, my other notes. Now, we're on shot 19, and I'm going to do a whole different video on replacing the crankcase shaft, the crankshaft seal. You can see right here, we got a brand new seal on there, pressed in there. Uh, go ahead, I'll put a link down below on how exactly how to do that. But again, if you're this deep, go ahead and replace that. Uh-oh, you can see I just, uh, <laughs> I just lost some parts. I think that goes in there, hopefully, like that. Yeah, we're going with that. So also don't don't flip your crankcase cover upside down while your pump shaft seal is not installed. That is not a good thing. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and I got all my stuff back in there. Slide, don't pull this thing all the way out. And also it's always a good idea to put a little lube, lube on your shaft before she goes back in there because you do not want dry seals anywhere on this sucker. So you can see it slides back in there like so. And then we're just going to bolt this sucker up. <sighs> All right, I swear we're getting close. This is actually shot 19. Um, but next thing, which is very, very important, you're going to have to clean all the mating surfaces here. Clean the inside, clean the mating surfaces. Again, cardboard cleaner is a great option. Uh, screwdriver, any type of sharp blade. You've got to get off all this old gasket material because this thing does not have a gasket. It's actually used RTV silicone sealant. Also, Make sure this side is clean too. You see, I've been putting some work in here and get a little tiny screwdriver and get out these little crevices right there where it holds extra stuff. So make sure all that is clean. All right, and then the next step, we're gonna bolt it on. So let me go ahead and get situated and we're gonna get ourselves some good sticky sealant and show you how this sucker bolts on there. <laughs> all right, I got one more thing to note while I got that oil pump cover off, if you did do this step. Before you put that cover back on, make sure to align that rotor just like this. Because if you look in there, that's where your camshaft is going to slide all the way through. And if you don't align it like so, you can see right there, it's not going to align. So push it all the way up there towards the filter, like so. And you can see it like right about there. Also, it says to fill it full of motor oil. I'm not going to do that. I just well lubed it with some Max Tough because I'm worried about it spilling everywhere. Uh, and also, it's 52 inch pounds is the torque on those three bolts holding that cover on there. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and get rolling with the next step. <laughs> Hi, folks. I know it feels like I'm teasing you because I am teasing you right now, but we have a couple more items to cover before we put the cover on the engine. Yes, pun intended. So just a couple quick checks. Make sure your timing gears are lined up circle to circle. That's very, very important with this whole situation. Make sure everything's clean and aesthetic. We already talked about that to death. Uh, next one. You want to, before you press on the cover, you really want to check out your alignment pins. That's these three pins here. I suggest go ahead and take them out with some needle nose pliers and go ahead and sand them if needed and go and make sure that they fit easily inside of here and then the corresponding hole on the cover. That way when you press this cover on, you're not going to have any issues. These pins can get nasty and dinged up and <laughs> they can cause you a lot of problems trying to press those suckers together. Also, Double check, you've got your oil pump seals right there. A couple of O-rings right there. Uh, another thing to check is test fitting. Test fitting, again, is very, very important. Before you go ahead and put all the silicone goop on there, you want to test fit. You want to make sure that cover slides on there flush because if you don't test fit, you end up like me. When you put all the goop on there, and then it doesn't fit. You got a couple millimeters in there. You don't know why. You start beating the crap out of a hammer. You get stressed out. You pull it off, and then you got to wipe off all the goo. Now, why did I fail that first four times I tried this? Let me let me show you. You'll notice right here this crankshaft gear is flush with the camshaft gear. But if you're like everybody else and you think you're going to invert this engine like so, where we put it on her butt, boom, boom. I'll show you what happens when you invert said motor. This crankshaft pushes up just a touch right there. You'll see that there's a little bit of a lip and what that causes is that it makes a little bit of lip in this cover. 
So when you install the, the cover, make sure it is on its side and that these two are completely flat against each other or else you're going to have some major problems. All right, so I'm not going to waste your time with putting RTV silicone on there, but I will tell you what I'm using. I'm using this stuff called Resinol. I use it all the time. Uh, motorcycles, three-wheelers, four-wheelers, cars, whatever. It seems to work pretty good. It's made by the Germans. There is a different silicone sealant in the manual. It's a Kawasaki one, but it was like $50. So I'm not going to mess with it, but I will show you right here. Uh, liquid gasket. That is the number. It's like $50 on freaking Amazon. Also, go ahead and take a snapshot there. Take a snapshot there. These are the assembly procedures in the manual. <laughs> All right. Now it's time to get dirty. We're going to throw on some pookie on here and uh, slide her together. So stay with me. All right. So we're finally going to button her up. We got our shaft lubed. I can see I've got a real thin layer of RTV silicone all the way around. Make sure to put circles all the way around those uh, oil tubes and we're just going to slide her on. Just be real easy. Again, double check that you're flush right here. Give that a bump. And just ease her on in there. You want to pull this top thing back a little bit. There we go. Moment of truth. I can't tell you how many times I've struggled with this. You can see it's going to be a little tight around that uh, oil seal there. Looks like we got a good... Come on. And of course, you're going to have some little issues, but hopefully the little tap tap, she slides on home. Looks like we got a good seal finally. Again, don't tap it too hard, but you want to make sure that she's sealed up. All right. <laughs> Sweet. Finally. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start the bolts, and then I'm going to show you the torque sequence of torquing this sucker down. All right, we finally got her buttoned up. I've got everything hand tightened, but the next step is to torque these bolts. Now, you don't want to go around and torque this one, this one, this one, this one, because you want to put easy pressure across the whole thing. That's why there's a very specific torque sequence that's going to jump to different bolts, and we're going to put 20 foot-pounds. If you want to see the manual right there, you can see right there. Well, come on, focus for me. Yep. All right, that's the torque sequence right there, but we're gonna go ahead and go through it. I don't know if that worked or not. So, all right, number one is right here, this guy. And as you torque them, you're gonna see that, that goo come through, baby. All right, number one. Number two is down here. Again, 20 foot-pounds isn't a whole lot, but you don't want to do too much. All right, number three down here. I wish I had more jokes for you, but I don't. Four right here. There we go. I always like that. Oh, yeah, that click right there. Five right here. Going across the south. All right. Come on. Six is right here. Well, I guess I lied to you. It does look like it's going in a sequence. All right, again, it is very important to shaft that crankshaft before you install this sucker, because I have not <laughs> greased up that crankshaft before on car motors, and it leaks every time. So it's very, very important to put your grease on that shaft before you slide her on. All right, seven's up here. Eight right here, nine right here. All right, we're getting there, folks. So cool. I love watching that, that pookie slide up in there as you torque them down. Now, you don't want to use too much pookie again because, as they say in the professional business, then you become a pookie monster, and that pookie gets all inside the engine. You just want a real thin line. All right, folks, that's ten. <laughs> I tell you guys what, this thing is running amazing. A little trick right in there. The, the piston rings did it. It is running so good. There is no more smoke. Starts quick. And the biggest surprise is that it runs a lot smoother. There's a lot less vibration. Uh, the engine feels like it's brand new. 
So I know I had a lot of doubt when I started this video, but I tell you what, that is the way to do it. Just take it step by step, take it nice and slow. If I can do it, you can do it. Trust me, I'm not that good of a mechanic. <laughs> but if you guys need any other mower video specifically to this Kawasaki motor, I'm gonna put a, a link down below to my playlist. I essentially do everything there is to do fixing this Kawasaki. So with that, stay tuned. We'll do something goofy next week. More Mike out.